All right, so let's look at our final example, and that's an adaptive path uh, branching example. And so let me walk you through a little bit of what we're looking at here. Um, it's just a uh, series of content library templates. So I just inserted uh, some content slides and some quiz slides. So the idea is we're going to start with a title slide here, uh, and then we'll have a content slide. So these are just really set up slides. They're not going to do anything. Then I have three quizzes. And uh, what I want to do is give points for each choice. So if I look over here in form view, the only changes I've made to the quiz slide is I've changed the scoring from the default by question to uh, by choice. Because I want to give a value. I want to give a point value for every choice. Obviously, we're going to reward the learner for the good choices, but they still get something for participating. But uh, that's the only change. And then I change the attempts from a two to one. That'll keep us, that'll just let us test this out faster. So uh, we could always go back and change that if we want. But that's the only changes I made. And then to help us know which points we gave, I made a little uh, text box right here for 10 points for the first choice, five and one. And so we did this, for, I did this for three examples because I want to be able to demonstrate that we can track points throughout the quizzes and using the built in results slide. We can track the, the, the points that our learner has earned and then get them to a single slide someplace later. And in this case, um, this slide right here, where we can silently branch them to one of two or more. We're only going to use two here, but one or two, one of two new scenes based on how they're performing. So learners who are scoring at this point 20, they have 20 points or more, uh, they're doing fine, right? We have three quiz questions. We think you're doing pretty well with that. Um, we're going to uh, continue you, keep you going on a primary path. If you have less than 20, then we're going to take you to a separate path. Now, we've completely outlined and told the learner what's happening. We told you what's happening right here, but uh, this does not have to be uh, transparent to the learner. They could get this second content on the remediation path and never know that they were on a separate path. Um, same thing with the, the learner on the, on the primary path. If they're doing well, they just keep moving along, and they think that's how it goes. So the way this works is we're going to work and all within the built-in storyline functionality. We're not going to create custom variables. So we're going to let storyline create the variables for us using a result slide. So I'll come over here to story view. I have a separate scene and here's the different tracks, right? The remediation, uh, the, the, the critical path that we're getting back on, primary path and remediation. So it's just two different slides of content for each. But I have a placeholder scene here called result slide. And the way this works is we need one of Storyline's built-in result slides. So let's insert that slide now. Um, if I should mention, right, we don't have any variables at this point. Uh, Storyline's going to create all of these for us because um, that's what's going to happen when we insert the result slide. We'll get the result score, pass score, pass points, and so on. So I'm just going to add a slide and result slide. So this is Storyline. Um, I could work with the built-in, which is a generic, unthemed version. Um, I am using the Vibrance theme right here, so I'm just going to use the Vibrance results. But the results slide, in this case, really isn't going to be shown to the learner, so it doesn't really even matter. But I don't know. I just want to keep it consistent. So I'm inserting that slide right here. And here it is. It's asking me which quizzes I want to track. So I definitely want to track all three, so that's going to... Let me, you know, evaluate, Storyline's going to evaluate what the point score is for each. Um, I don't really care about the point pass score at the moment. So I'm going to leave all the default settings alone right here. But here's what I want. If I come over here to the failure or success, I can see that we have the score percent and the pass percent. These aren't really what I want, even though this is being generated by Storyline. Uh, the way it works here with this content library template is... If I pull open my variables, these are the four variables that are always created. So we're, we're, only, we're only showing in this template the results for percent, score percent and pass percent. But what I want is this one, score points. What are the current points that the learner has earned? This is created by Storyline. I can't write to this, which means I can't adjust this variable, but I can read the variable. I, this variable exists so I can read the value of uh, whatever score points is. And so what I'll use is a variable reference, just like we've been doing throughout the entire session, to display the score points and then use that to help me um, validate that, you know, whatever conditions I set for my trigger 
are working. So I don't need to do anything here. Goodbye results slide. Come back over to this slide. And now I want to create the variables that say, hey, you know, when you get to this slide, you know, we're at some point in the course, I want to jump to a different slide based on the current score. All right. So here's how this would work. Score points. This is a perfect place to add a reference to that score points. Now, I'm going to make this easier. I'm going to use the long way to do this because then it's easier to see how we, uh, we insert the reference. So I just I already have a text box here and I have an active cursor. So I go up to my insert tab, reference, and now I can pull in the value of any one of these four. The one that I want is the score points. I just want to know what the current score is in points for um, this project. I could use the uh, score percent, but points is going to be a little easier to work with. So score points, click OK. And there it is, results.score points. Put that back on the slide. And I'll make that bold. So um, this is a system variable that Storyline creates, but I can always read the value of it. So we have, at this point, the next button is jumping to a slide. But let's say, I'll modify this jump to slide, and let's say we're going to go to the primary path, which is right here, uh, scene three, primary path, and I'll just choose the first slide. When user clicks, so that's not going to be my trigger, right? Um, we're going to basically come in here. Actually, yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> when user clicks the next button, we'll work with the player next buttons. So when user clicks or swipes, the... Um, Oh, I'm modifying the wrong one. Let me, I'm sorry, let's do the, the next button. I was on the previous slide. Previous slide can work just fine. We're, we're okay with that. So next slide is jump to uh, primary path, slide 3.1, when user clicks, the next button, on the condition, right? And now we need to read the score. We want to know what this score points is. So on the condition that the variable, and here's all four of those again, these are the created variables for us, Score points is greater than or equal to, and let's just say 20. If it's greater than or equal to 20, keep moving on through this main path that we want. There it is. And click OK. Now we need a second trigger that says for the next button that says, nope, if it's not greater than 20, if it's less than 20, then jump to this a different scene. So um, I could copy it, paste it, and then... I can make, actually, I think I can make all the changes here. So let's say, let's jump to remediation path, slide 01, and it's not greater than or equal to, right? In this case, it's going to be less than 20, right? Anything less than 20, so less than 20. That's really nice to be able to do that without having to go and create the whole trigger. So we have two buttons, jump in two slides on the next button, but it based on the condition or the value of the score points, we're going to... Um, go to one of two different scenes, and that's going to be, you know, transparent to the learner. In this case, we're giving you a big warning to say what's happening. So let's preview uh, the project. I need to preview the whole thing so I can pull in uh, those values. All right, so here's our intro slide, just a, a content slide, content slide. Here's my multiple choice. So um, let's say 10, click submit, I move forward, and I'll go for 20 on this first one good score. That should be 30 on the next slide. So there's 30 points. When I click next, I'm going to expect myself to see the slide one of the primary path because my score is greater than 30. And primary path it is. Now the one thing I would, you know, as I'm working through this, um, is I might take this result and I might want to see that um, on each of my multiple choice quiz, quiz questions just to see if the scores are working. Uh, it worked for me in this case, right? But, um, you know, if this is a new project and one they haven't done, I do this at the workshops a lot, um, I would want to see that it's working. So um, I can select all three of these slides and then press Control V to paste that value. And that just brings that up to each slide. Just like before, I'd probably delete this. I would delete this. Um, well, or, or maybe, I shouldn't say that. Maybe I would, would incorporate this into the design and show the points to the learners what they have. I wouldn't show this. You know, I wouldn't show what they have right here. Um, but this is also going to help me for testing it. So let's preview it one more time and just look at um, what happens if we get lower than lower than 20. We should see that we go to a different path this time. 
my content and content five and I'll just keep getting my five points. Oh yeah. And so up here you can see the points adjusting are working correctly. Uh, I'm not doing so well. I only have 10 points. Um, I could save myself if I got this top one, but uh, I want to keep it low. So this will give me 15 total points. And now I'm at 15, which means when I click the next button, I should go down uh, to the remediation path, but I didn't preview the whole project. Are you serious? All right, so let's go through it one more time and I'll just score uh, five on each one. There's my points being updated for each slide, five and so on. And I have 15, which means now I should see remediation path slide 01. And that's it. Go through a couple and then I can just add the triggers to get myself back on track for um, the back on track series. But that's how you can use the built-in scoring, right, to determine what content a learner sees based on a score value or percent value. We use points, but you could use the percentage as well and then show additional content or let the learner jump over content if they are performing well.